Christmas is just a month away and I have the urge to try something I should have done a long time ago and you know what? It's time to raise that flag once again. This is the high grade Barbatos and boy is it good to see you again. Tom the Robil. This is not a review video considering this is a 2015 kit and also this is my second time snapping this kit. I'm pulling up old photos of my first Barbatos build when I bought it during its release. At the time, my panel lining and paint skills were mediocre and most of the color began to fade due to prolonged exposure, therefore I decided to sell it. Eight years later, I took a trip down memory lane and watched the series again, but in English. And despite the many upgrades the Barbados get throughout the series, the first and fourth form always leaves an impression. Of course, the high grade itself still has some particular flaws and I want to fix that or maybe improve to help make it stand out and I wanted to go back to the basics to try out my painting skills this time around with the Barbados and see how the kit holds up, so let's check it out. The areas such as the Vifian and the Maze has this weird gap I wanted to cover up so not to be distracting. By mixing a bit of thinner and putty, I'm creating a, pa a paste-like substance to fill the gaps and will trim and sand the area once it dries out for about 12 hours at least. The large leg binders and the upper thigh armor has this recess areas in the back that's supposed to be an exposed inner frame, but this design sort of makes the leg look quite chunky in my opinion and it defeats the purpose of the inner frame design if Bandai wanted to show off that inner frame, so removing those extra bit of plastic helps expose the frame a little bit. The seam line on the arm is a tricky mess to fix as the armor pegs onto the inner frame so the idea of having to paint the frame first and then masking it after to seal the seam line seems like a long and difficult process. I went with the option of cutting out the pegs of the inner frame, trim the inside of the armor before cementing the seam so the inner frame can easily be slid down into the armor like a glove. While stickers were provided for the warning symbols, I wanted this kit to be fully painted from the top down and painting those symbols took real patience considering I was painting on top of a fully painted piece. The face piece had a lot of missing details other than stickers for the eyes and while it's mostly just dark areas painted over, this could provide a challenge for beginners to test their patience painting over small details. I used a leaf green paint to help bring those eyes to life around the dark areas. Even with a handful of stickers to cover major areas, there were some that surprised me that Bandai didn't include and that would be the yellow vents for the shoulder armor which is an integral design of the Barbados because without it, it just felt odd how they decided to let this pass. The toes on the other hand lacked two colors that needed to be painted over for anime accuracy. It doesn't take away from the overall design but I wanted this kit to be closely accurate to the on-screen appearance. And finally, by using gunmetal to bring out the frame once the armor is put on, I wanted to paint the piston in gold to give depth to the design and accentuate the mechanical parts of the kit. 
With such an intricate design, it's a shame most of the frame won't be seen, but I still find it amazing how well this was put together, and adding paint chipping damage will probably add more flair to the Barbatos and its animalistic nature. Right from the get-go, the Barbados still holds true as one of the unique mecha design that houses an inner frame for a high grade and how it deviates from the humanoid mecha design, which is why I consider the series and the model kit a breath of fresh air. To start off, the Barbados comes with the first form swappable arm during its first appearance without its shoulder, and this is more of the incomplete form which I find it easier to create dynamic poses without its shoulder armor. This also exposed the frame a little more and it shows the poor state of the design before bulking the kit up further. The kit only comes with two melee weapons, the mace and the sword. Personally, I prefer the mace over the sword simply because it's such an unorthodox design for a Gundam. Another welcome addition is the Barbatos 4th form parts which is the swappable arm and shoulder armor to complete the look. As it is mentioned in the series, the fourth form is the closest design to the Calamity War and it does bulk up the kit quite well. But because of the added armor, there's quite a bit of limited movement in the arms and I sort of struggle trying to pull off this pose with the fear of damaging the paint, but this pose works better than I thought. Additional accessories comes with two holsters for the weapons and a pair of long and short mechanical arms that can be attached to the removable backpack as means for the Barbatos to reach out its weapons during combat. While this is not included in the kit, I found some leftover mobile workers both from Season 1 and 2 just stashed in one of my spare parts. It's quite convenient to have them on display and really adds a flair of Tekkadan on standby. This can be acquired from the MS options Set 5 and Set 1. The Barbatos is one of a kind mecha design in the Gundam universe that really sticks out like a frail silhouette compared to the humanoid designs I'm used to, and it appears more like a creature of odd proportions. In terms of the model kit, I love the feel of the plastic band I used for the inner frame. It feels easier to handle, it's fragile but stable, and it holds the kit quite well. It's not a perfect kit by any means due to the lack of details but I think Bandai was simply flexing their engineering at the time of this kit's release and didn't focus too much on the color part separation department yet. I would give the articulation an 8 out of 10 due to certain limitations in the arms and the skirt sections in the waist where I feel I can pull off dynamic poses but it's not quite there yet. Overall, the kit begs to be painted on and adding chip damages here and there adds personality as this design felt like a warrior that only knows brute force and doesn't have the time for formalities. I'm looking at you, Kara. Which is why I'm pleased with this output and who knows, maybe I might tackle on collecting all the Gundam frames of the series that's been released so far and provide them the same look as I did with this. For the time being, thanks for watching and the future builds to all builders. Build safe, stay safe, see ya!